Android Audio have just brought out the new Evo 75 and 150 streaming amps. And like amps from Gato Audio, you can get them with wood panels down the side. Initially, I didn't like this, but I'm kind of warming to the wood panel look with all the different materials used. And when you tastefully do it to fit in with room decor, not in a kind of Griswold family truckster looking way, you know, that car from National Lampoons. Right here, the wagon. But I'm really sold on the Apple-esque silver metal looks of the CXN version 2. Unfortunately, they stopped making the black version. It does actually say Cambridge on the front, but it is a Cambridge Audio, one and the same brand, by the way. Against some competition in what is a crowded market, this is a well-revered streamer. But does it actually live up? CXN version 2 is a streamer, so taking music on network drives or PCs or internet music streaming services. But if that's not enough, pfft, it's also a DAC or digital to analog converter to feed your amplifier with analog sound. And again, if that's not enough, pfft, it can also be used as a digital streaming transport, i.e. streaming all your music to another DAC. I'm not going to be minding spitting again. As a small downside, it does feel rather light and insubstantial. And look inside and there is loads of free space, perhaps a symptom of making this type of hi-fi to suit the full width case market segment. First though, we have to connect it up. Play radio stations from around the world, including all sorts of weird, funny ones. Don't be looking up dodgy place names like I did as part of this video to see if they have any comedy effect value. Alternatively, you can get stream music to the CXN in so many different ways, but how? Well, first of all, via Spotify Connect on phones, PCs, Macs, so too the new Tidal Connect. It's Rune Ready 2, which means you'll need a Rune server on your network, like a Rune Nucleus. And with Rune, you can play highest resolution music over Rune's RAT protocol, again using a controlling PC, Mac, tablet or phone. Another way is to use the Cambridge Audio Stream Magic app. You can plumb in streaming services, Quobuzz and Tidal in that app and play your radio stations there too. It's not quite as nice to use as Blue OS on Blue Sound devices. There isn't any inbuilt Bluetooth in the Cambridge Audio 2, so you have to buy an aftermarket USB adapter which Cambridge Audio sell. You can use the front or rear USB slots for USB music pen drives, or play off network attached storage drives or other network computers drives. Although, it's not quite as nice to use as, say, Tidal in the Stream Magic app because you're set by the tree folder structure of the hard drive's media server. Another way is to send music over AirPlay on compatible apps or from, say, the Apple Music app. And because it has Chromecasting built in, you can Chromecast music to it too. So you no longer need to use your Chromecast audio pucks. ability to switch from playing, say, Tidal on Rune or via the Stream Magic app or Spotify Connect is really intuitive with the CXN to make 
music easily startable, if that's such a, a word I can use. And in standby mode, the CXM plays to any music commands it receives. I don't think cross source playlists is possible in Stream Magic, so a Tidal track and a Spotify track can be on the same playlist, as an example, which is something, by the way, I really rate above gapless playback, which is a feature of the CXN. Obviously, I'm not making any revelations by saying that it caters for most PCM sample rates. You know, most streamers do that nowadays, but it also deals with DSD up to DSD64. It doesn't have an MQA capable DAC which to be honest for me isn't really a, a much of a disadvantage so far as PCM is more than good enough for most people. Here are some more in-depth specs though. I like the CXN2 because it's idiot proof and because you can use it at the unit like old school type hi-fi. I love the color display which doesn't seem to be high res but it is good enough. You can obviously use control apps or the remote which if you're a little paranoid like me of having a full six digit passcode on my tablets and phone is really handy for quickly advancing tracks without the palaver of unlocking devices first. I'm not quite sure why I do have my devices security protected up to the hill. There isn't anything dodgy on them. But say if you are in room with room radio playing, that's the smart interface that starts playing music based on your own library and what's in Tidal and Quo Buzz, you can use the remote to skip to the next track if something really annoying comes up. But if not, and you love the music, like the rather chilled out tracks on Underworld's Drift Series 1 that I'm listening to at the moment, you can use the repeat button on the remote control. My Hegel H390 that I'm using for this review uses the same remote code as the CXN's remote. I Don't take two bottles into the shower with you. Sorry, wrong thing. Use the remote <laughs> up and down volume buttons without the Hegel remote. Total bonus. I'm looking great. <laughs> Because the CXN upsamples all music to 24-bit, 384 kHz, used with some incisive DACs like the Cutest, there is some very slight treble edge in the top frequencies. I actually thought this was the upsampling going on. You don't have a non-oversampling stroke oversampling button to take the edge off, and this obviously is speaker and AM dependent too, but actually Upsampling only happens in the CXN if you have the analog outputs connected. In other words, Cambridge Audio's ATF2 or Adaptive Time Filtering Upsampling only happens in the digital to analog conversion domain. When I actually switch to the Hegel internal DAC and the DAC of my RME, this edge went away. So it's important to stress the DAC dependency of it all and it's something I mention as I noticed the change. Using a Node 2i as just a digital transport into the Chord Cutest 
This edge isn't present, but it is very slight and sound quality is pretty much next to damn it the same. So I'd say if you are intending buying the CXN as just a transport, it won't give better sound quality to the Node 2i. It's not as good as a Sonore optical rendu streaming transport I'm using as a Rune endpoint at the moment, but that's in a totally different ballpark price category. But if you are buying the CXN, it's probably moot on the transport thing anyway, because you buy it for its DAC, or you should buy it for its DAC. And that's where you get a huge surprise, because with its DAC using both Balanced and RCA outs, the CXN is at a similar detail retrieval level to the Cord Cutest, which is amazing really. It doesn't have as big a sound stage as the Cord and is very slightly more composed in less treble sheen and air in the Cord, especially in the mid-range. But it's really, really close and nuanced. And let's remember the relative prices too, which makes the CXN amazing value. Because you can connect a digital output to the cord and XLR balanced analog outputs to my Hegel at the same time, you can quickly flip between inputs to compare. I gotta say, I wasn't expecting the detail this CXN is capable of using its own DAX. And with the two Wolfson WM8740s it uses, remember this is a dual mono design. Considering the £800, $1,100 price point, this CXN really rocks your socks off for detail. And it's not only a good streamer, but as a tremendously revealing DAC too. So in other words, it would be totally stupid not to connect up other digital inputs to it to get the best benefit from it. Basically a kind of jack of all trades, I think. A great streamer, a great DAC that punches above and that may be a cliched expression, but I tell you, it is so true. I played Morning on Beck's Morning Phase album and the drum beat is really decently low and engaging and dynamic too. You can tell that the chord is slightly deeper and tighter, but when I played Attached from Orbital on their Snivelization album, a real treble test track by the way, and one of my favourite Orbital albums, this top treble is lovely. It's not grating or edgy at all. The acoustics of Rocky Trail on Kings of Convenience's new album Peace or Love are just right and the bass treble balance of the CXN is pretty well balanced too. Even accounting differences in gain and level matching, the DAC in the Blue Sound Node 2i is quite a bit inferior in terms of audio file use to the CXN, flatter, less detailed and about in every sonic area. Okay, the CXN is another £300 mine, but to be fair to the Node 2i, remember it's similar as a transport and the Blue OS app interface is the winner over this Cambridge Audios app if you aren't using Rune. Things like MQA live streams, which Blue Sound were doing last year with the Jazz Refresh concert, if you watched it, you could watch online and listen in MQA through your Hi Fi 2. <laughs> Okay, I got a bit carried away there, but my point is this type of hi-fi is for everyone. No class divides, no alienation in pricing for performance, tea and scones only if you want to, and it still performs better than it has any God-given right. Not only as a DAC, which almost takes the biscuit out of a cutest, but features connections and streaming prowess. 
I haven't used it as a preamp yet. Jury's still out on that. If I did have to pick some faults, then it would be to do with ancillary things, not in the actual product itself, the manuals and instruction guides on their website, which are a little bit out of date. And hopefully they get this sorted if you're watching this into the future. But to be honest, these are small downsides, especially if you aren't going to be using the Stream Magic app. The fact this is not a massively expensive streamer in the scheme of things and performs so well in features, sound and use basically tells you all you need to know. You've got to take your hat off to Cambridge Audio really and say congratulations for what they've achieved with this product.